Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. And today, you guys have been asking for it. It is my complete 53-man roster projection for the Philadelphia Eagles heading into training camp. It is July. I means training camp is just a couple of weeks away. And so these are going to be my predictions for the 53-man roster as it currently stands. First, though, I want to just break down the new CBA because a lot of people are saying, wait, is it a 53-man roster? Is it a 55-man roster? It essentially still is a 53-man roster. Now, though, on game day, you're allowed to activate two extra practice squad players to go from 46 on the active roster on game day to 48 on the active roster on game day. And practice squads are expanding from 10 players to 12 players. So essentially, two players every single week from the practice squad might or can be elevated to the team's active roster. That is just not always a guarantee. You don't have to do that every single week. One of them does have to be an offensive lineman, so you get an extra offensive lineman essentially whenever you go ahead and get started for every single week. So I just want to break down the new CBA, but essentially still, it's a 53-man roster. It's what teams are going to go ahead and break down. So I'm going to do 53-man roster and then 12-person uh, practice squad depth chart at the very end as well. So we'll go ahead and start with the easy one, really, in my opinion. It's the quarterback spot. So here's your quarterback depth chart. You'll keep three. Carson Wentz is a starter. Nate Sudfield is number two. And Jalen Hurts is there at number three. Now, Will there be an open quarterback or backup quarterback battle in Philadelphia in training camp this year? Absolutely. If Jalen Hurts balls out and is fantastic, he will be the backup quarterback. But we gotta we gotta remember. They, they, the coaching staff is very high on Nate Sudfeld. They gave him a new contract this offseason to go ahead and keep him in Philadelphia. Don't be surprised if Sudfeld is the true number two quarterback and then Hurts is kind of, again, the wildcat, you know, comes in and has a package play here or there, the Taysom Hill type quarterback, but I think he will be there at number three overall. But a big first question mark, obviously, is who will win the backup quarterback job in Philadelphia. But they'll keep three. Those are your three quarterbacks here for the Philadelphia Eagles depth chart going into the 2020 season. Before we keep going, be sure to subscribe to Philadelphia Eagles now because we're very close to 12,000 total subs, and I'd love to get 12,000 subs before the weekend. So if you enjoy our content, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below because we got you guys covered all year long on the latest Eagles stuff, whether it's offseason, training camp, uh, preseason, the start of the season. We are the, I mean, to me, the best channel on YouTube covering Philadelphia, so go ahead and subscribe down below. Running backs. Here are the four running backs that they will be keeping. It'll be Sanders, Boston Scott, Corey Clement, and Elijah Holyfield, although... As you'll see in my practice squad list as well, Warren and Killings, those two undrafted free agents, could really push and try and take that fourth running back spot away from Elijah Holyfield because Holyfield, I guess, is going to be the short yardage back, although Corey Clement is a beefy guy. You could probably run him at short yardage as well. But right now, I'd say Holyfield is going to be the fourth running back. Obviously, Sanders is one. The question really is Scott or Clement to be the two. I think they're going to go with Scott to be the true number two. They'll mix Clement in there at third down as well, but those are your four running back spots right now overall. Who do you guys think will have more touches in 2020? Boston Scott or Corey Clement? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Wide receiver is a little bit interesting. I'll go ahead and explain this right now. You'll see the little lower graphic saying Alshon Jeffrey uh, is not on this list because he will start on the physically unable to perform, obviously due to the foot injury. So he is on the roster and he will eventually be activated to the active roster, but he will start on the pup list, which essentially means he's on injured reserve, but can come back or essentially his spot can be taken by, an by an another player and then given back once he, he comes back. So it will be the start of the season, Deshaun Jackson, Jalen Rager, Greg Ward, Marquise Goodwin, J.J. Ortega Whiteside, and John Hightower as the six active wide receivers on the Eagles roster. My guess is they're going to put Quez Watkins on the practice squad just because Hightower obviously was drafted in the fifth round a little bit higher. He should be on the active roster. Those are going to be your wide receivers right now. And obviously you can move them around. Goodwin can be the number two. Rager can be the three. Whiteside had a very good end of the year. I say very good, a lot better than the start of the year in 2019. So he could rise up those boards. The wide receiver depth chart could be moved up and down, but those are the six wide receivers I see making the active roster and being a part of the 53-man roster. And then obviously one will be bumped down once Alshon Jeffrey comes back, or they'll bump a different position group, whether that's offensive lineman or defensive lineman. That way they can keep everybody else and bring back Alshon Jeffrey at the same time. The real question is who plays a little bit more in the slot this year? Who has a better season in 2020? Is it the rookie Jalen Rager or is it the really Philly hometown, not hometown, but Philly hero, the 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 practice squad hero story of Greg Ward. Let me know what you guys think right now with our betting weigh-in in terms of who has a better 2020 season, Jalen Rager or Greg Ward. 
Mo mo uh, moving on, easiest one here to me is a tight end depth chart. Ertz is one, Goddard is one B, and then Josh Perkins will be number three, although they like to move all their tight ends around in terms of blocking, in terms of receiving. Perkins was a big uh, player in terms of the latter part of the year when Zach Ertz was injured, so it looks like it'll be three. That will be my guess. The real question is how much greater can Dallas Goddard be in his third season in Philadelphia? Very average first season, I would say below average his rookie year, was trending up last year, played very, very well. You go back, watch the Dallas Cowboy game, and even into the Seattle Seahawks game, he played absolutely fantastic and was seemingly the number one target for Carson Wentz, not named Zach Ertz because Zach Ertz was not in the lineup because the last trade kidney for a lot of those games. But then, of course, Josh Perkins is going to be number three, but Goddard is the one to keep an eye on here in the Eagles' tight end roster depth chart. Before we keep going, 4th of July is right around the corner, and the 4th of July t-shirts with the Eagles logo are still selling, and they will still be selling even after. The majority of them are less than 20 bucks right now at chatsports.com slash Eagles 4th. Links down below in the description box right now. You just click that. It'll take you to the t-shirts, the hoodies, the men's, the women's sizes, the blue, the red, the white. It's all fantastic for Independence Day and the weekend and even beyond. You can wear it. You don't have to just wear it on 4th of July weekend. You can get it later and wear it for the rest of the summer. So chatsports.com slash Eagles 4th is the place to go ahead and pick that one up. Final bit here on the Eagles offense, the offensive line. A little interesting with Brandon Brooks obviously being placed on IR, so it creates an extra spot so the Eagles can have even more offensive linemen. I think 10 total will make the active roster. Obviously, your starters are going to be Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, Isaac Samalo, and Andre Dillard. The question will be, who's that right guard? Is it Matt Pryor? Is it Jack Driscoll? Is it somebody else? We know the backups will obviously be Prince Tego Winogo, uh, Herbig, obviously Jordan Ma, um, Jordan Ma Maliata. I always mess up his last name. And then Sua Opeta as well will be probably the 10th uh, offensive lineman on this depth chart. It's pretty self-explanatory in terms of where everybody fits. You know, Prince can be kind of a swing offensive tackle. He can start an offensive tackle if he needs to in terms of injuries. But your starting five are very obvious. The center will be Jason Kelly, uh, Kelsey. Say Amala will be the left guard. It will probably be Matt Pryor, the right guard. Dillard plays left tackle. And Lane Johnson plays right tackle as well because Brooks is on IR. There is no chance of Brandon Brooks coming back this season as obviously whenever you tear the Achilles, it's a full 12 plus months of recovery. So there's no chance of him coming back. So he's put on injury reserve, meaning his season is officially done. Okay, that's my projection for the Eagles offense. Will they have a top 10 offense? This is a question I've asked before, but I want to see what you guys think after seeing the depth chart. To me, it's a pretty darn good offense. Good O-line, a superstar potential at running back. You have some young guys at wide receiver and a top five quarterback in the NFL and Carson Wentz. I say they will be a top 10 offense. If you agree, type one down below for yes. If you don't and you are a hater or maybe a closet cowboy fan, I don't know why you're watching this video, but type two down below for no. All right. Defense, 10 defensive linemen, to me, it makes sense. We're going to mix in defensive ends with defensive tackles. Your four starters will be uh, Brandon Graham and Derek Barnett as your two uh, pass rushers. Cox and Hargrave will be your two starters on the inside, but Malik Jackson is going to get a lot of work on the inside as well. I think there will be a lot of times when it will be Hargrave and Jackson with Cox getting a rest. That way Cox can be healthy in the fourth quarter and or really just not wind in the fourth quarter and can play at his full potential. Your backups are Hassan Ridgeway, Anthony Rush, Josh Sweat, who will have a microscope over him because Brandon Graham is aging, and Derek Barnett's been a little iffy back and forth. Jannard Avery, obviously the trade uh, uh, outside linebacker slash DN candidate from the Browns, and Sharif Miller will round out the rest of that. Derek Barnett needs to become a real stud on the defensive line. He's had some really high spots and some really low spots in games. We've talked about this a lot here on Philadelphia Eagles now. The stats last year aren't anything to write home about. The hope is that those can go up to maybe double-digit sacks, and he becomes the true number one pass rusher on Philadelphia in terms of defensive ends because we all know Fletcher Cox is really the best defensive lineman on the entire e e uh, Eagles squad, but I see 10 defensive linemen right now for Philadelphia. The weakest depth chart, the weakest core on the Eagles, I've always said, is linebacker. They essentially did nothing to address the linebacker position this year, unless you, uh, I guess, claim signing TJ Edwards counts, although I really don't. Nathan Gary will headline the group, even though, to me, he is not someone you want to be headlining your linebacking core. He'd be a nice additional piece, but I wish they would have gotten better linebackers. It'll be Gary Edwards and Duke Riley. You'll have Davion Taylor also make that list. They will have a couple, including the Stanford guy they drafted, um, Sorry, the Temple guy, the uh, linebacker that they drafted this year. He'll be on the practice squad, but obviously can move up. Bradley, I believe is his name. We'll have more on that in a little bit. But this is self-explanatory. We understand the linebacking core is weak. The Eagles have always, in my opinion, have weak have, have, have had a weak linebacker core. Even the Super Bowl year was probably their better linebacker core in a very long time, and they ended up not re-signing uh, Michael Kendricks. And then, of course, they let go of Nigel Bradham. And so this is what you're left with. And the hope is they can be a lot better than Thomas Mott of Philadelphia Eagles now says that they are going to be because it's a little worrisome 
as you look at the Eagles depth chart. But to me, the rest of the Eagles overall defense is great. Obviously, the D-line is good. We'll move over here to cornerback, and the cornerback position went from very, very meh, very, very average to, in my opinion, very, very good this year. Trading for Darius Slay, getting a true number one shutdown cornerback, a top five cornerback in the National Football League is huge. He'll start, in my opinion, alongside Avante Maddox. And then the real question will be, is it Sidney Jones or Nikhil Roby Coleman as the nickel cornerback? There are some people inside the Eagles organization I was reading who think Nikhil Roby Coleman is a top five nickel cornerback in the NFL. That's, that's a little bold. You only paid him $1.3 million in the offseason, so he can't be that great. Craven, Craven uh, LeBlanc and Craig James obviously had plenty of time last year. LeBlanc was fantastic in the 2018 um Divisional round against the Saints, he had the interception against Drew Brees, the very first pass of the game, and so he can also mix in there at the slot spot, but I think your starters are Slay and Maddox, and it'll probably either be Coleman or Jones as your nickel guy, depending on if Sidney Jones is as good as Sidney Jones keeps telling us he is going to be this offseason. Maddox is my starter, though, at cornerback slot number two. Um, your safeties, again, are pretty simple. Ronnie McLeod and Jalen Mills, although I'm going to be honest. If Mills is terrible at safety or vice versa, if Maddox, Jones, and Coleman are all terrible at cornerback, there could be a very real scenario where week four, week five, Mills moves back to cornerback, meaning it'll either be Will Parks or the rookie Kayvon Wallace out of Clemson, who he, Brian Dawkins gave his seal of approval, the former Clemson player himself, filling in as the other safety opposite of Roddy McLeod. But right now, it'll be Roddy McLeod and Jalen Mills as your two starting safeties. But the backups are better than the Eagles have had in a very long time, and they'll obviously both get some special, some special teams work as well in Will Parks and Kayvon Wallace. There you go. That's my projection for the Eagles' defense. Likewise with, with the offense. Will the Eagles' defense be top 10 in 2020? I think they have to be. I think the defensive line itself is going to project them to be a top 10 defense, but they're going to be right there between really 8 and 14 in my opinion. I would type Y down below to agree with this, but if you don't, type N down below as well. Quickly, special teams is easy. Um, it'll be Elliott as your kicker, Cameron Johnston as your punter, and Rick Lovato, obviously, as your long snapper. Jake Elliott, to me, has been one of the most consistent kickers in the entire National Football League the past couple of years. Huge during the Super Bowl run. Struggled late last year. Look back at the Cowboy game. Missed some 50-plus yarders, but he's fantastic. Good to have him there as well. Before I give you my practice squad projections, give me a name of one eagle you want to be on the practice squad or someone Anyone you want to be on the practice squad, maybe an undrafted free agent sitting out there in, you know, undrafted free agent land. Let me know who you guys want on the practice squad. The big names here is we'll flash through these. Our Warren and Killings are obviously the two running backs who, like I said, can push Elijah Holyfield to be the number four running back on the active roster. I think both Warren and Killings will see some active roster playing time at some point this year. Quez Watkins is, of course, the late round wide receiver. He's tall. He's fast. I think he'll see some playing time as well, but I'd probably start out on the practice squad unless he, I don't know, balls out in training camp and in the preseason. Um, Goods Jones, obviously, is the uh, lineman. The only other name that I think has a lot of notice here is Sean Bradley, the linebacker, who... If the linebacker core is as bad as I think it is going to be, maybe Bradley gets some playing time there as he had a lot of playing time at Temple and was a starter there for a very, very long time. There you go, though. That's all the time we have for today in terms of the 53-man roster projection. It's not a very hard projection. The Eagles are very, I think, set at every spot in their position. It's more of where are we going on the depth chart for, you know, the number two running back or the number two cornerback or the number three wide receiver. But the roster, I think, is pretty much self-explanatory, but I wanted to break that down for you guys here today on Philadelphia Eagles. Now, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree in the comment section? Obviously, if you like what I did, then be sure to subscribe to Philadelphia Eagles now because what we do here on the channel, keeping you guys up to date on the latest Eagles news, rumors, videos like this, everything else going on, we have it covered for you here at Philadelphia Eagles. Now, for all, uh, for all the time we have for today, for Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Montz, signing off to the rest of your day.